and welcome back to my channel. I'm back with another plant video. We're going to be doing my Hoya collection video today and we have about 70 something plants. So let's just get into it. I don't really know what else to say other than I love Hoya and I'm ready to show you guys all of my plants. So the first plant that I'm going to talk about is my Hoya caudata because she is right in front of me and she's super cute. She has a new leaf that just came out. It's actually this leaf right here. She's got a few splashes and she's tendrilling out. So she is planning on giving me a few more leaves sometime soon, but this is her. She's super cute. This is a smaller leafed variety of Hoya caudata. Um, this plant has beautiful blooms. I don't think I have ever seen a flower as cute as this one. It is furry. There's so many Hoyas out there that have furry flowers, but this one I think takes the cake. I actually have a larger leafed version of this that's just a cutting that's currently in water right now, but this is my original Hoya caudata. The next plant that I want to talk about is Hoya calistophylla or calistophylla. I know that people say it different ways, but this is a beautiful calistophylla that Ashley from Plant a Seed with Ash actually sent me for the Planting Kindness Give Back Challenge. I am in love with it. This is my favorite calistophylla that I have. I actually have three of them. I have the short-leafed version, I have the long-leafed version, and I have this one. This one looks quite a bit different than both of my other calistophyllas and apparently there are different forms of calistophyllas like there are different forms some of them were found in different places so they're named after the places that they've been found in like the Hoya calamantin is a Hoya calistophylla I know that there's also a Hoya calistophylla that's like really dark around the edges that one is super cool hopefully I can get one of those one day but this one is my favorite and I love her to death. So yeah, I've got three Hoya calistophyllas. The next plant that I want to show you guys is my Hoya ring sand. This is another one that I talked about on my channel a quite a while ago on my Hoya wish list. I think it was actually in my last Hoya collection video that I added the wish list to at the end of. This was one of those plants and uh, this is one of my favorite Hoyas for sure. The splash on this is just the most amazing thing ever. I love it to death. It's also not a slow grower. Um, I'm not sure if you guys can tell, but there is a new leaf that's coming out right there. I haven't had this plant for that long and it's already giving me new growth, but of course it is spring already, so that probably explains it. But it's just so pretty. It's an easygoing Hoya. I love it to death, but it has really beautiful veins and really just nice thick leaves. I love it. It's my baby. It is my child. The next plant that's sitting right in front of me is the Hoya curtisii. Um, this Hoya I actually got from Lowe's quite a while back and the plant from Lowe's unfortunately is no longer alive. This plant right here is cuttings that I took from that plant and I made into a smaller plant. Um, the larger plant that it came from, I unfortunately left it outside and I didn't think it was going to be as much of a diva than it was and it pretty much just ended up like just it was so soggy and so bad I tried repotting it I tried doing something to save it and it just it just didn't want to be saved so I have this little plant now I think it does much better as cuttings leca and small plants than it does like in a big plant um I did however never move it out of the soil that it was in from the big box store so I think that might have something to do with the fact that it declined so rapidly <laughs> but yeah i have a hoya curtisii the next plant that's in front of me i showed in my recent haul video this is a hoya palita um it is super beautiful you can tell that it's super shiny super veiny it's one of the coolest plants i think in terms of like veininess and like thickness 
super 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 cute i know that wayne said that it wasn't a super rare plant but i actually have never really seen them for sale anywhere so if you see one out there hopefully it's a good price the next plant that i want to show you is actually a new plant that i'm so excited to show you guys this is a hoya latifolia i got this on instagram from those leaves though and she sold this to me and it's just can you see how beautiful this plant is this is also known as a dinner plate hoya i never thought that i would actually get this plant but i'm so happy that i did it's definitely one of my favorites it feels nice and smooth and thick i love it so much the other plant that i also bought from her was this beautiful hoya finlaysonii that leaf is my favorite leaf it is so gorgeous i also have another kind of finlaysonii and that finlaysonii doesn't look anything like this because as you guys know there are many types of finlaysonii like even a gunungading i think is how you say it um those are a type of finlay and i it's just so beautiful i love it to death this is probably my favorite finlay in my collection right now and I just, I can't, I can't stop staring at it. <laughs> the next plant I also actually got from Plant a Seed with Ash. This is my Hoya Fitchii. I have a larger plant of a Hoya Fitchii in my greenhouse, but this is a tiny little baby and it actually has like, I think in my opinion, prettier leaves than my other one because my other one has like tiny leaves and this one is slightly larger. Yeah, I love this guy. The other plant that I got from those leaves though on Instagram is my Hoya Australis Lisa. So I finally got a Hoya Australis Lisa. I didn't have one before. I did have the Hoya Alba Marginata. Um, that one actually ended up reverting on me, so I was really upset about it. So I needed another variegated Australis, so I got this guy. Super pretty. I don't know how I went so long without it. Everybody says that it looks really similar to a Hoya Crimson Princess, which I agree, it totally does. It has like a different texture of leaf, it's also significantly rounder and it has like really pretty splotchiness. So I don't know. I think it's cute. I really like it. On top of the Australis Lisa and the Australis Album Andronata, I have a regular Australis. Um, I have the large one that I have downstairs and I have this tiny one that I got and that I made a plant out of a couple cuttings. Um, this guy actually needs some water, but super beautiful. I love this plant. The next plant that I have in front of me is actually a Hoya Numillarioides. So I have a larger plant of this downstairs. It flowered for me like crazy this fall. I took a few cuttings of it and I'm actually planning to use these in a trade that I'm doing with somebody on Instagram. I could not believe how much it flowered on me. The flowers are adorable. They're like tiny, they're white, they're pink in the center. They smell very strongly of perfume. Um, but yeah, Hoya Numelorioides. Another tiny plant that I have is a Hoya Carmele. So I actually have another sort of slightly larger plant of this, but it is kind of struggling right now. I do have this guy. I was able to salvage some cuttings and these look perfect. They're so cute like this. They definitely remind me of like a Hoya Serpens or something because they have such tiny leaves. And speaking of a Hoya Serpens, I also have a Hoya Serpens. This plant was actually significantly bigger whenever I first got it, but it was dealing with some root rot. I was trying to fix it. It was really hard because these leaves are so tiny, but I managed to salvage it. Um, and now there's like a whole new vine that's coming out with a bunch of little leaves. So yeah, Hoya Serpens. And then the other tiny leaf Hoya in my life is the Hoya Matilde. Hoya Matilde. Hoya Matilde. I, honestly, this is this is probably my favorite Hoya. And I know, I know that it's multiple people's favorite Hoya. It's it's so tiny and cute and I just it grows so fast. It grows so well. It roots super fast. This plant is actually like a little bit splashy. Um most 
of the regular Matildes have a little bit of splash like that. Um, they're super beautiful. I love it so much. I know that this plant actually has a sister called like a choke. I think that's how you pronounce it. And it has like really green leaves and the leaves are also slightly larger. But yeah, this is my Hoya Matilde. I did have a few cuttings of it, but again, I'm going to use them in a trade. And I did actually end up gifting some to Dea for my planty kindness give back challenge. So yeah, I have a Hoya Matilde. Hoya Matildes are amazing. The next plant on my list is a Hoya Velosa. This Hoya Velosa, I was searching for for forever. Look at that shine and the thickness of it. And it's also like fuzzy on the bottom. It is just, it's such a beautiful plant. Again, I think everybody should have this plant. I'm actually sort of on the hunt for the long leaf variety of this plant. Um, it is just as cute. It has like roughly leaves on the end and they're like long. They're still fuzzy, they're still veiny. And it's just, uh, I, it has my heart for sure. This is just such an amazing plant. The next plant that I wanna show you guys, I'm sure you've seen like a thousand times on my videos. I feel like it's been in a lot of my videos because I've actually had this for quite some time. And it is my Hoya Carii Variegata. It's one of my favorite Carii for sure. The reverse variegated carii that I have, unfortunately, is losing a lot of its variegation. I don't know why. I've given it a lot of light. I I did end up moving it inside for a short period of time during the winter because it was cold, and then I moved it outside again, and it seemed like it didn't like the transition in light. Something happened there, and it ended up losing a lot of its variegation. But this guy is still variegated and beautiful, and I don't think that it's going to be as easy to lose variegation in this. I also have a massive regular carry eye. As you guys know, it's huge. It's so big. I got it as like a regular six inch pot and it just like exploded during the summer, I think is whenever it really took off. And then I put a trellis on it and then it was just like game over. This has become a monster. <laughs> so yeah, I have that carry eye and then I also have a carry eye splash. I really want a fuzzy variety. That's sort of the last one on my list. I need that. <laughs> okay, and now we're gonna get into my smaller plants and cuttings. Um, this is my Hoya sigitalis. My Hoya Sigitalis that is actually coming out with two new leaves. Look at the leaves. Um, this is actually very similar in pattern to a Hoya Curtisii, except the leaves are very long. But yeah, this is a Hoya Sigitalis. Sigillatus. I think it's actually a Sigillatus. I know a lot of the names that I have for my Hoyas, I mispronounce because I can't read. I don't know why I like flip some words around. I don't have dyslexia. I just, I just, I see a word and I like hear it in my head and I'm like, oh yeah, no, that's definitely how you say it. Like, that's definitely how you say it. But no, it's sigillatus. Like the T is after, it's like, it's after the L's. Um, but, but anyway, that's that plant. And then the next plant that I have is actually a Hoya Bella Variegata. This is a plant that I actually got in Austin. Um, I got this in Austin at a unicorn plant sale type of thing that they were doing. And I got it. It got spider mites. It was really sad. I was really upset <laughs> because I had paid like 50 something dollars for this tiny plant and I was so scared that I was gonna lose it, so I took a cutting from it. This is actually the cutting from it, and it's doing much, much, much better than the plant that I took the cutting off of, like than the mom plant. You can see that it's actually coming out with a new vine right there, and it's so pretty. I love it so much. I'm on the hunt for a Bella Albo Marginata, so the one that has like the variegation on the ends because I feel like it would kind of complete my collection, but it's not really on my wish list. It's just something that if I ever do come across it and it's inexpensive, then I'll buy it. But it seems like everybody wants to charge an arm and a leg for these plants because apparently they're hard to come by. But yeah, I have a variegated version and I also have the very large Bella that I have outside. I actually had this inside, but it kept producing peduncles. 
and then it would drop them <laughs> and it would drive me nuts so i was like i can't i cannot look at you anymore so i decided to put it outside i'm gonna keep an eye on its water level see if maybe it could produce more peduncles for me the next plant that i'm going to talk about is a hybrid of a hoya bella and it is the hoya chinghunjensis adorable the most adorable looking plant I think I have. It is so cute. <laughs> All of my plants are so cute, but this plant is especially just like precious. It's such a precious plant because the leaves on it are just so tiny and is so like, I don't know, edible. <laughs> I just, I really, really, really enjoy it. It has like very tiny little micro hairs on the leaves so whenever the new leaves come out the new leaves look like little fuzzy fuzzy little hands i just it's one of my favorites i love it so much i got this from hoya how hoya how i love him you should check him out he's awesome and then i have a hoya fuwuensis who used to be called a hoya fuwua um which why did they change the name why did they make us try saying a fuwu and says like that's that's much harder to say in my opinion <laughs> um but i love this plant so much i got this as a three leaf cutting from tiffany the other two leaves i tried i tried rooting i'm still trying to root them and it's just they're not cooperating but this guy this little single leaf cutting ended up rooting very very nicely for me and the plant is now coming out with a new leaf and new growth so i want to just pat myself on the back because i love this plant and i grew it myself <laughs> the next plant is actually a cutting that i got recently and this is a hoya verticulata slash robergier again they're just changing the names on us i don't know why they do that but they do it so i'm gonna comply but this is the plant that has a bunch of very cute little pink and purple specks on their leaves. Super beautiful. It's also kind of veiny. I love it. It's so pretty. Um, I can't wait for that to root for me and for me to see more little baby leaves with pink spots on it. <laughs> and then the next plant that I have is actually giving me new growth and it is my Hoya Elliptica. Hoya elliptica, aka turtle shell plant, is the most awesome plant I think ever. Look at the leaves! The leaves are spectacular, and the little baby leaves that are coming out are just as cute. Um, it really seems to be trying to do something for me, so I can't wait to see more leaves. It's so pretty. I just... I can't, I can't, I love it. And then the next plant that I have is my Hoya Mirabellis. I'm sure that you're sick of me talking about it because it is one of the plants that I got for my birthday and it is probably one of my favorite plants right now. A lot of my plants are one of my favorite plants right now, but this one especially, like, I don't think it gets talked about enough. It's so pretty. It reminds me of like velvety, just goodness. It's so pretty. It has like long leaves. It's actually coming out with new growth for me already. I am in love with it. I am in love with this plant. I have occasionally just smooched this plant a little. Uh, as weird as that sounds, I totally give it little kisses. That's how much I love this plant. But yeah, this is a Hoya Mirabellis. And then I have a Hoya Parasitica Splash. Hoya Parasitica Splash that I got from the plant vibe on Instagram. This plant is coming out with some new growth. You guys see that tendrilin? I see that tendrilin. You see that baby leaf that's super shiny? I see that baby leaf that's super shiny. So beautiful. Amazing. Just amazing plant. I can't, I can't wait to see the splash on this plant. It is, it's just, I love you. Uh, but yeah, this is my Parasitica Splash. And then another plant that is actually kind of similar to Hoya Bella, in my opinion, is the Hoya Parvaflora Splash, which I also got from Hoya Hao in that same order that I made with the Ching Huangensis. Um, this is a Hoya Parvaflora Splash, like I said. She's a beauty. Um, I am super happy 
that this rooted for me, but it is just a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous plant. And the next plant is actually a rehab plant. And I haven't updated you guys on this plant in a long time. This is actually the plant that I got from Russia. I ordered this from Russia. A whole, a whole stem just rotted away. And I didn't have very much hope for this plant. And I put it in some LECA and now it looks like this. Do you see how large this is? I don't think I've mentioned what this is, but this is a Hoya Croniana Super Eskimo because it's super. It's a super Eskimo because it has a ton. I'm talking a ton of splash. Like that entire leaf is silver. It's so gorgeous. Really took off in Lekka and I love her to death. And then the other plant that I have that I actually did not order, uh, my boyfriend ended up buying this plant for me on Etsy. This is a Hoya Cypodingensis. I actually used to have this in dirt in a pot. Um, I ended up taking lots and lots of cuttings from it to trade away in hopes, in hopes that it would start to grow for me and it still hasn't done so. I was so surprised. Usually when I cut plants back, it ends up like throwing out new growth, but this one just will not budge. It won't give me a new leaf. It won't give me a new stem. It doesn't like me. Um, it's really beautiful because it has red leaves. It's slightly cheaper than Hoya Sunrises and Hoya Obscuras out there. And that's why I wanted it because I was like, this is a plant that I think could subside my desire for those red plants that are out there. Because for these red plants, you have to keep them in a pretty good amount of sun for them to actually get stressed out enough to turn red. Uh, and then, I don't know, it, it seems like extra work, you know? <laughs> and then the other plant that I have right here is my Hoya Acuta Splash. So this guy, I actually have two of. And again, the Hoya Acutas, I think, are now considered Hoya Verticulatas. This was sold to me as a Hoya Acuta Splash. It's not extra splashy, and that leaf came in a little wonky, but it's still so pretty. It, again... I ended up growing this from just the single leaf and then this little baby leaf came out recently and I have a larger plant of this that is going nuts. So um, this one is like tendrilling out like crazy. It has a new leaf that's coming out. I can't wait to see that guy become a monster the way that my other plants are becoming. But yeah, this is my Hoya Acuta Splash slash Hoya Verticulata. And then the next plant that I wanna talk about is my Hoya Vertindiflora. I have not showed you guys this plant in a hot minute. I got this plant whenever I really was not feeling that great. My boyfriend bought this for me and it was a four inch pot, but it did not have this much growth, like nowhere near this much growth. I put it on a trellis, and it stopped really growing for me and I was so sad about it, but it started getting new leaves. And as you can tell, it has a new tendril right there coming out with some new growth. And it actually gave me a couple new leaves recently. That leaf that's right here is new and so is this one and so is this one. I adore this plant and like I've said before it reminds me of Perry the Platypus which is why I think that I love it so much. It's just it brings a smile to my face. And then we have this insanity right here. This is my Hoya Polynura. This beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Polynura I actually repotted recently and it has come out with a crazy amount of new growth. This whole vine was not there when I first bought this plant. Um, this plant has also put out another little vine that's coming out here. And then just today, I noticed that it is coming out with another vine right there. It has veiny leaves and it's thin. It looks like a fishtail. That's why it's called a fishtail. I think it's also called a mermaid's tail. It has so many really fun names because it is so deserving of them. They're, it's just so stunning and breathtaking. I love, I love Hoya Polynura. And then I have this Hoya Blasternasii SP Valmayoriana, I believe is how you pronounce it. It was originally one cutting that I cut into two. And then the second cutting that I took from it has actually come out with a new leaf for me. 
I wish that it wasn't so wonky, but it's doing its thing. Super excited about it. And then there's another little stem behind this leaf here. You can see that there's a stem there that's coming off a new leaf. It's adorable. I can't wait. I can't wait to see more leaves on this guy because the leaves are stunning. It reminds me a little bit, a little tiny bit of a Hoya Fichiae, Hoya Campflora Flora, but those plants are slightly different because this one is like narrower. Another plant that I got from Tiffany's that I actually showed you guys recently is my Hoya Vitalinoides. Super awesome plant. It also is known to be like a Hoya meredithii. Um, I don't really actually know. I This plant seems to be a plant that is sort of like debated over a lot because Hoya meredithii looks significantly different to Vitalinoides, but apparently they're supposed to be the same plant. It's a gorgeous one though. Like it is so pretty. The veins on it are awesome and it's definitely one of the largest leaved plants that I have um it's absolutely stunning i can't i struggled with it for a little bit but now it's happy and i'm happy <laughs> and then the next plant is a hoya kamenjiana this beautiful hoya kamenjiana is like i didn't realize how much i needed it until i saw other people had it and i was like oh yeah i need that plant i definitely need that plant it is one of those plants that's actually not that similar to any other Hoya variety, the way that it grows is very, very different. It grows sort of like in clusters like that. This has been a very crazy grower for me. Like it has already touched each other and it's starting to, you know, cross over and it's so beautiful. The next plant in my collection has actually been a major, major, major pain in the butt. <laughs> it was losing leaves like crazy. Um, I actually also think that it was mis-ID'd when it was sold to me. I actually was the one that kind of mis-ID'd it. Um, this is a Hoya enduensis. Um, I mistook it for a Hoya cania camariana. Um, and the cania camarianas apparently are slightly fuzzy. They have more narrow leaves. And this one is very smooth and they have rounder leaves. Um, this plant was losing leaves like crazy. It hated me. I also was not a very big fan of it for a while because it was pissing me off. <laughs> um, but I ended up putting it in a cloche. Um, just, I covered it with a cloche and I have it sitting on top of a heat mat and it recently started giving me new growth that way. Um, I want to just thank Doug from a Vermont Hoyas because I read on his website that that's pretty much what he did. He was also having trouble with this Hoya and putting it on a heat mat and putting it like under more humidity seemed to have like really saved it and it seems like that's sort of the same case for me. But yeah, Hoya enduensis. Not a beginner plant for sure. Definitely don't recommend that you buy it unless you're willing to take up a challenge. <laughs> And then the next plant I have is a Hoya Rebecca. This again is one of the plants that I got in the Hoya cutting bundle from Hoya How. This guy is so adorable. It kind of reminds you of like little bunny ears. Um, this one is another one that if you sun stress it, it will turn red. Um, I think it looks very similar to a Hoya Lacunosa. Um, but it has like more veiny and slightly thicker leaves than it. I hope that it grows nicely for me and that it becomes a little bit cuter because right now she's not really a stunner, but I love her. <laughs> I do also have, I want to say five lacunosas. Um, I don't have them in front of me with in front of me right now, but I do want to show you guys. I have the Hoya Lacunosa snow caps. The one in my greenhouse is going berserk. It has a thousand peduncles ready to flower. It already gave me a flower. I have the mama plant downstairs. I have two regular lacunosas that are sitting on my front porch that I got from Lowe's. Um, and I have a Hoya Ruby Sue that I recently got from Lowe's. I feel like it's really similar to a snow caps. I honestly don't know the difference. I've heard that the flower is actually a little bit more pinky in comparison to a snow caps. So I, I ended up buying it even though I totally didn't need it. The very first Lacunosa that I got 
is actually a lacunosa that I have not like been able to 100% ID. Um, it's, I'm positive that it's a lacunosa. Like there's no doubt in my mind that it's a lacunosa, but the lacunosas that I have from Lowe's and Home Depot and all the lacunosas that I have look very different in comparison to that plant. But yeah, uh, those are all my lacunosas. And then I wanted to talk about my Hoya pubicalyxes because I have a thousand of those as well. This one is a Hoya pubicalyx splash. I actually have two Hoya pubicalyx splashes and I have a Hoya Royal Hawaiian Purple and a regular pubicalyx. So pubicalyx is are definitely one of my favorite Hoyas. They're so easy to come by in my opinion. I see them all the time. They're really great prices. They have really beautiful foliage. The splashes on this are just adorable. The little flecks on the regular kind are also just precious and the royal hawaiian purple is super cool because its new leaves come out almost this like dark red color and then they like transition into this super crazy dark maroon color super beautiful super stunning i love pubicalyxes they're probably my number one plant that i would recommend for people who are just starting off with hoyas because they grow fast, they're easy to care for, and they come in different varieties, and they make you addicted to collecting them. <laughs> Another one that I actually moved outside but I took cuttings of is my Hoya Shepardii. Hoya Shepardiis are not the easiest plant. I don't know if it was just because my plant is so large, but I struggled with this plant. Um, I didn't, I couldn't figure out the watering schedule. Mine was really upset with me not because I was doing something wrong but because it was just like it just needed a lot of rehabbing and a lot of love but this guy is actually flowering for me it's about to flower for me it doesn't look like it's going to be dropping its buds anytime soon but yeah it's it's about to flower it's just a cutting um and then I have the mama plant outside and then a rare variety that I have here which honestly is starting to become a lot more available on the market so i don't really like considering things rare when they're not rare they're just expensive <laughs> this is my hoya linearis that i got from the plant vibe on instagram she actually needs a little bit of water right now but she has grown so much like she is so long she grew out like a whole new little tendril right here and right here this one is just totally brand new I adore this plant. It's a super easy plant for me. Super quick grower. It was ridiculously easy to propagate because I actually did end up propagating like this little bit above here. Awesome plant. Awesome, awesome plant. But overall, if you get it like from cuttings like this, it's super, super easy to take care of. I adore this plant. I think it's definitely one that everybody should have. 100%. The next plant that I have to show you guys here, I showed you guys in my most recent haul video. This is Hoya Hoya Kentiana Variegata. That is what it was labeled as in the nursery, but this is one that has a, a debate around it. Um, this is actually also called a Way Edii Variegata. People say that a Kentiana Variegata isn't actually a thing. Um, I don't, I can't. I feel like I've tried so much. I've looked at so many pictures everybody is 50 50 on what's a kentiana and what's a variegata some people say that kentianas are slightly more narrow which is what i thought and then other people say that wayetti eyes are slightly more narrow and that i don't know it's it's a very confusing plant to id i feel like one day they're just going to end up naming them all one of those names and totally getting rid of another name this is what it said in the nursery that this was a kentiana variegata but i do know that other people also call it a wayetti eye variegata and it is beautiful it is one of the prettiest variegated plants that I have. The narrow leaves are super cute. I adore this plant. This is another really easy, easy going plant for me. And then the other plant that I have to show you is my Hoya obovada. My Hoya obovada is a tiny plant that I made from cuttings um, from my mama plant that I have outside. My mama plant is a massive. I love that plant. That is one of the plants that I think really kicked off my addiction. I got that plant from the plant chica. I could not for the life of me control myself when I bought that plant. It has really nice 
textured leaves. It has some leaves that will come out super splashy like this. Some leaves will come out totally green. Like it, it's just, it's such a nice plant. And again, this is one that I 1000% recommend to beginners because it grows so quickly for you and it's really rewarding. I adore it. And then I have my Hoya Dekii, which again, I showed in my most recent plant video. In my most recent haul video, um, the new leaf is really peeking its head out towards you guys. It really is just such a cute little baby leaf. I, I cannot get over how adorable that is. I have uh, more baby leaves coming in th inside. There's two right here and there's actually another stem, I think right there. I don't think you guys can see, but there are multiple new leaves coming out on this plant and it's just, again, such a rewarding plant. I had no idea that it was going to give me new leaves like that. I was 100% not expecting that. It really takes my breath away. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I got that from Gabriella Plants. Go check out my haul video if you haven't already. I talked about it a little bit more there, but I just, I, I adore it. And now I'm gonna talk about all of my different Carnosa varieties. So this one right here is a Hoya Hindu rope. Hoya Hindu ropes are really not that rare. You can find them in Home Depots and Lowe's. Costa Farms like grows them. So occasionally you can find them there, but I love Hoya Carnosa Hindu ropes. They're so pretty. And every time that I've seen like a Hoya Hindu rope with like flowers on them, it just looks super, super, super cool. Cause it's like curly and then it's got flowers. It's like hair that has like pins in it. It's so pretty. I, I love Hoya Hindu ropes. I also have a regular Carnosa variety. There are multiple different kinds of Carnosas. So there are some Carnosas that are like thick and narrow like this. There are other Carnosas that are thick and wide. There are some Carnosas that are kind of thin and like, kind of splashy. There's so many different car kinds of carnosas, but they're all just considered Hoya carnosa. The other sort of Hoya carnosa variety that I have is a Hoya chelsea. So Hoya chelsea's are super cool. They have little divots in their leaves. They have little heart-shaped leaves. Absolutely a gorgeous plant. The other two Carnosa varieties that I have are Hoya Crimson Queens. These are huge. These are so much bigger than how they used to look in my other videos. I've actually taken cuttings from this plant and it still looks massive. Like, they're so nice. So somebody told me that this one is actually the narrow or like lime green narrow form of the Hoya Carnosa Crimson Queen. The queen is sort of a name that they came up with because it has the margin around the leaf instead of inside of it. And this is the Hoya Carnosa Crimson Queen round or like wide form. That's why the leaves are so different. I adore this plant. I think if I were to choose between the two, I like this one a little bit more just because it's like fatter. I don't know, <laughs> but both of them are so pretty. And honestly, like seeing them on camera like this, like makes me sort of fall in love with them a little bit more. And then the last Carnosa variety that I have is actually my Crimson Princess. And that one is outside. Um, that is one that I got from Lowe's a long time ago. It was actually much, much, much bigger. Now it looks great. It is coming out with new growth for me. I adore that plant. I really don't want anything to happen to it. Having a larger plant like that, I feel like is much easier to kill than having tiny plants because a tiny plant, you can really see what's going on with a big plant. You are pretty much just doing guesswork. And then the other plant that I got from Plants a Seed with Ash is actually a Hoya Imbricata. I have this Hoya Imbricata right here. She is just so gorgeous. This is a taco leaf plant and I adore it. I adore it so much. The splashiness is super cool. It again kind of reminds me of a Hoya Cretaceae, but this is super cool because it like folds onto its stem. If you put this like on a mount and get the roots to actually like go in and the new leaves to come out, the new leaves will probably sort of suck on to the, to the board instead of folding over. But 
super 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 cool plant i'm super happy to have gotten that and again thank you so much to ashley from plant to seed with ash go ahead and check her out please if you can <laughs> and then the last plant that i have in my little area here is my hoya thompsonii my hoya thompsonii is my favorite plant like hands down my favorite plant like if i said that i I had another favorite plant, I lied to you because this is my favorite plant. It has splashes, like this leaf has splashes. It has fur on it. It's it's a hairy plant and, and not just like a slightly fuzzy plant. It's a hairy plant that's fuzzy that you can pet that feels like a like a like a pet, like a dog, I don't know. Um and it grows super quickly and it's super easy to take care of. I adore Thompsonii's. Thompsonii's, I think, deserve to be the queen of Hoya because they're so awesome. I I am very, very passionate about them. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's this guy. I also have a few plants to show you guys that are actually outside. Um, so I'm going to show you guys those now. I do have a Hoya macrophylla that's outside. This is the same macrophylla that I unboxed with my grandma. I love that plant so much. I really wish that it would grow for me. I did have it tendrilling out just like crazy. It was such crazy tendrils, but the tendrils actually ended up dying off on me once I had to bring it back inside because it got too cold out there. So I ended up pretty much having to chop those off. It really sucked and I haven't seen any new growth recently, but I really hope that it gives me some soon because I love that plant. And then I have a Hoya melliflua outside as well. This melliflua is super cool. I'm super, super, super excited to see the blooms on this. I got this from Zonine Tropicals. I also got this Hoya pentaflebia, or pentaflebia from Zonine Tropicals. Super awesome plant as well. And also super excited about the blooms on this one because they are yellow blooms. I don't think that I have a Hoya that has yellow blooms and this one does. So I'm really, really excited about it. And then the last plant that I have to show you guys is this Hoya SP Affinity Bertonier or Bertonier or Bertonier. I don't know how to pronounce the name of this, but I do know that it's not a Bilobala and it's not a DS70 the way that Costa Farms labels it. This is the last plant. Um, one side of it is super sun stressed. This is a plant that can get sun stressed. And I actually really enjoy this sort of burnt look, but the other side is green. So I think it's super fun that I have a plant that's basically half green and half red. So that way I can get the best of both worlds. But yeah, this is the last plant I think that I'm going to show you guys. That, that was my full Hoya collection. I am so sorry that I talked so much during this video. I have so many plants. I really love every single one of them. Again, I'm not a super crazy Hoya expert. I, I just love Hoya so much. Hoyas are so just, all of them are so different and I, I just, I, I kind of want to like put you guys on Hoya if you aren't already on Hoya because they just, they deserve so much love. Apparently they were really popular in the 70s. I can't wait for them to be more available for us because right now, right now there are a lot of rare Hoyas out there that are pretty difficult to find unless you import, but that's why Hoya Facebook groups are super fun. I actually started a Hoya Facebook group called Houston Hoya Heads. If you're in Houston, in Texas, in Louisiana even if you're kind of like in the area and or you like to visit Houston I definitely recommend following us and joining the group um I think that we're gonna have a lot of fun Hoya talk but yeah that's gonna be it for today's video I really hope you guys enjoyed and if you did go ahead and hit the like button down below and if you like me and you like plant videos go ahead and subscribe if you want to but that's gonna be it for today's video and I hope to see you guys in the next one leave your Hoya wish list down below I'd really really love to hear them bye